How's it going everyone? Well, last part of the cleaning of the boards. Uh, we're going to get started on the playing field, the bottom side of the playing field. I'm going to get everything all cleaned up on here. Gonna, uh, we have all of our switches here. We have our uh, pop bumper switches and our gate switches and our down post. There's our down post here. We'll get all of those all cleaned up. Uh, we have our lower gate relays to do, and plus just all the all the switches, all the little leaf switches to get cleaned up. Uh, we got a, and we're gonna resleeve some some solenoids, our pop bumpers, our kickers. Uh, we'll check our our flippers and down post our post buttons here uh, this coil looks pretty good this one I don't know is, was changed and I don't I don't know don't recognize that coil whatsoever uh, our flippers are actually pretty good except I, I want to check check out what's going on here And I think this one, this one's not too bad. That one still moves around. And we'll change out the, the bushing down here. We'll change those out on our, on our bumpers. Or bumpers, on our flippers. Now on the bumpers, I'm going to take the bumper, the solenoids completely off when I do. I'm going to leave them unhooked from the, uh, pusher from up front on top because I am going to remove the pop bumpers off the playing field to clean everything so I'm going to go ahead and just leave the, that disconnected. I'll unsolder the, the light sockets on them so we can pull that up out of there. You can see they're soldered right down in there. And we'll get that all undone. And I was just kind of, I was looking over everything on here, and we do have a busted <coughs> switch, busted leaf switch here. So I'll have to see if I got one of them, see if I can round that up. And that was about all I had seen under here. I didn't see anything else, well, except for our rusted kick-out holes. I think I'll pull that up and get that cleaned up you can see it looks like got wet somehow so we'll pull all that up out of there and see if we can't clean this guy up maybe maybe paint it I don't know I don't know if I want to go that far or not uh, over he said everything looks pretty good except for that kick out hole over there the other kick out hole is a little little rusty down there but not too bad you got loose coils So naturally we got plenty to do under here to get this all ready to be played. So we make sure everything's going to work when we do get to plug it in. But, yeah. Like I said, uh, everything else looks pretty good. Pretty decent. We'll, we'll pull the tape off of here and see what we got. See if it's soldered or if somebody just didn't Twist some wires together. Uh, probably cut them and put some shrink tube on them. That'll make it look a lot better. But overall, playing field underside is really nice looking. There's, everything looks pretty good. Looks like all of our sockets are intact. And so let's get started. I think I'll I'm gonna clean the switches up first and then then we'll go ahead and pull these pop bumpers off and sleeve them and at least uh, get that done. Take these uh, pop bumper coils and that off. 
to start out there's two nuts on either side that hold that that ring that pushes the ball away from the bumper get those two off of there and you have three screws you have one here here and one over there which you can't see let me there we go that's better and then you can see that where the nut I just took off after you get those three screws up now you can just lift this whole whole thing right up off of here like so you can check your your spoons that's your switches and then we have the two wires here one here and one one there that we have to unsolder so we can take our they did was they left the post left the pin up and just wrapped the wire around it and then soldered it down which is a lot different than most of them most of the time what you do is you take this guy and you just flatten him down and then solder the wire down onto it we'll get him kind of straightened up so he'll come they'll go up out and you pull the top bumper up out uh, normally what I do is I'll put a piece of tape on those in case and because you know, most of the time I'm working on the playing field with the lights on I know you're not supposed to do that but it makes it look better okay now we can maybe Oh man. Alright, I'll try this again with a different screwdriver and see if I can't get those off. If not, we'll have to resort to brute force here. There we go. I think my orange screwdriver is just about wore out. Now we can get this all taken apart. A look at our coil stop yeah, it's got a little bit of a ridge on it it's been pounded pretty good not too awful bad though pull our plunger out and you can see she's starting to get a little little worn normally what I'll do is I'll take a file and just file that that little bit of a edge off of it our coil wrap and old aluminum yep old aluminum sleeve
I think that'll keep that paper on it to wrap. Okay, I'm gonna take a take a new sleeve. Put our new sleeve in. Let me fix him up. Okay, like I said, if there's a if you have a little bit of a ridge on it from being beat so much. I just file that little ridge off. That way it's not hanging up on our on our coil sleeve. Okay. Put him back in. Coil stop. And now we're ready to put her back together. But we're not going to because like I said, I'm leaving that loose so we can pull the pot bumpers off. When you, uh, we'll go over this when I put the put everything back together. I'll show you uh, what you have to do is put this switch goes on top of this plate here, and so what I normally do is if I'm going to be taking them off the playing field, is I'll just put one screw in it make sure everything can come right up out of there and now when we start working on the playing field we can just undo the pot bumper and pull it up off of there and work underneath of it clean it or whatever we need to do if we have to put new skirts and all that or switching plate whatever we can do that so I'll get these other two done up the same way I just did that one and we'll be ready to move on. I think the next we'll work on are those eject holes and see if we can't get one of them cleaned up so it looks a lot better. Now you don't have to take your pot bumpers off the playing field just to clean it and get it, you know, to work on it. Um, if, you, if you don't feel comfortable with soldering, then, you know, there's you really don't need to do it. I do it because over time I've become a lot more comfortable with soldering and it don't bother me to unsolder anything and and then put it back together. You don't have to just to clean the playing field or touch up the playing field or whatever you're going to do to the playing field. You don't have to take these off. I mean, it just, to me, it makes it a lot easier with them off than on. Trust me, there was times where I, I dreaded changing coils or anything because I, because I couldn't solder for shit. Well, now over time you keep soldering and keep soldering, you get used to it and there's nothing to it. You can, you'll can unsolder and solder anything on the playing field. You know, this is for people that, that are trying to do this at home. That, they pick up a pinball machine and want to work on it themselves and get it going. Alright, I got those three all re-sleeved and uh, unsoldered the joint or unsoldered the socket so we can take the whole, whole pop bumper off the playing field and clean everything up. Like I said, that's something you don't have to do, but I, I just do it. So now those are done, all of our switches are clean. I cleaned all the switches on the playing field. 
Uh, let me tell you the ones up top. Oops, sorry about that. You were in my way. All these guys, back you off a little bit, all these switches up here, I had to unscrew them up off the playing field to clean the, clean the leaf switches because there was no way I could get in to clean any of them. So now we're going to take this guy off. This is our one of our hole kickers. I already took the leaf switch off. And you can see how nasty it looks. Got wet or, or vermin pee. So let's get this up off of here and let's see if we can get this cleaned up and, and going a little bit better and looking a little better. I just have a hard time with the rust. These are pretty simple to take off of here. We got one screw here and one screw right down in there. Remove those two screws. Then we can take our coil off and this whole, we'll have this whole assembly in our hand. And then we can look at it and decide what we're going to do. Okay, took two screws out. And look how nasty that is. Even got to had to have been water or something, or like I said, vermin pee. Now all we got to do is we'll take a, take these two screws out here. We'll take solenoid off, and then we can work on that whole unit. Uh, so I'm gonna have to cut it here while I take those two screws out because I can't take them out with one hand. I don't think. Ooh. Uno. Dos. We'll take our coil stop. It looks pretty good. See, this one has a has one of these oh get up there one of these washers let me switch hands okay there we go has one of these uh, spring washers on it so it keeps the coil tight inside so it doesn't rattle or move around and there's that unit uh, I'll show you there's one down here that I know had to have been making noise. Here's one. You can see that sucker has got to be making noise. That one's not too bad. That one's okay. I think it was one of these. Yeah, there's your flipper. You're losing power on your flippers when they're loose like that. Because when it goes to suck the rod in, it'll move forward and then clank back. So we'll get that tightened up when we get down to the flippers. But right now, let's let's see what we're going to do with this. What do you think we should do? I think we should clean it all up and paint it. Maybe. Let's clean it up first and see what it looks like before we decide to throw any paint at it. So let me clean that up and I'll bring you back after I get it cleaned up. Okay folks, I took the took them all apart and I showed you what they look like and now this is what they look like. You can see I painted them black and then clear coat. I put a heavy clear coat on them to protect the paint and the metal. That's what it did look like. Because, you know, we cannot have our balls dropping into a rusty hole. We must have a clean, shiny hole for our balls to drop in. Uh, I got them re 
re-sleeved both the coils. Now we can get that all put back together and move on hopefully to something funner. I do have we still have to fix this guy. We'll do him next after we get our nice our holes all cleaned and put back together so we have a nice hole. And then I was just kind of wandering around and I, I was looking at this. I took the tape off of this and you can see we just have wires bugged together. That's what I always called it. Yeah, you know, everybody, okay, they're twisted together. I call them bugged together. And I got to looking at this and you can see our leaf switch was uh, stripped out. There's one screw broke off in the board. This was back here. What this is for is when the ball drains, this is the end of the ball switch. Racks up your points and then turns your solenoid on to kick it out to the next ball or game over. And what was supposed to be here is a leaf switch with a knob on it. Kind of like, like our hole relay, our holes. So when the ball drops down in, it, it hits that, connects it, and then tells the game that uh, the ball is in the hole. Ooh, in the hole again. So we'll have to do something with this too. I have a couple of ideas, and uh, that we'll do right after we get this leaf switch fixed. And then that's about it for the bottom here. And a couple of things, everything's all cleaned up, so let's get our holes put back together so we have some nice, clean, good looking hole. Okay, now we need our evens hole. There's our evens. Evens goes up here and odds goes out goes out out there. Alright, so now what we need is our coil stop. There we go. Now we got to get our leaf switch put in. I cleaned it all up. That looks pretty good. I'll take you off and I'll show you. There we go. Now see when the ball falls in the hole, you can see the leaf switch. That little nub sticks down in the hole and the ball comes in 
falls on that and it lifts up oops lifts up makes contact it rings up your points and then kicks the ball out that's all there is to those but now we'll have a nice good looking hole okay I'll get the other one put together and then we'll move on to getting this leaf switch straightened around Okay, on this leaf switch, you, know, you can see we have one, one terminal broke off. So, uh, we don't have anything, this is what I have, and you can see, it's, gonna, it's too short. So, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to make up our own leaf switch. Now you get this, get these at Pinball Resource. You can see there's your pad, your contact pads are in there, and all different size. Well, it's one size, but you can make it any size you want. Get him out of there. See how nice and long it is. What we'll do is we'll find out which hole is going to match up with the this long one out here, which will be this one right here. And we'll cut this down, and we'll put a contact in that one. So let's cut cut it down. Cut that one down right there. Cut him off, right? Jeez. Where to pull that out of? Looks like I pulled it out of a hay bale. Cut that off. Now we'll have one the perfect length that we need. And we know that the next hole down is where we want to put a contact. Move that out of the way. There you are. There. There's a there's a contact. Now we know we wanna we want this tab sticking out so we can solder to it. See this will go back down in here. So we want our solder point out here. So we want our pad facing up this way. Okay, to put that on, move that out of the way and get something else over here. I have this nice chunk of steel that I use as an anvil, portable anvil. Move you up so you can see. Put him so the small parts facing up. Make sure we're going the right way again. You put him right through that hole and flatten him out a little. And voila! Now we got a new contact. These are high voltage contacts, but it, it'll work on that low voltage. Now we just made up our own new contact. Because a lot of this stuff you can't buy, so you're going to have to either hope you have an old one lying around that'll fit, or you could swipe one off of something, or, like I said, you got to make one up yourself. I will pull this stack apart and I sound so monochrome <laughs> we 
What do you want me to do? I can't sing. I can't carry a tune in a bucket. There. And you know how much I like talking. Now, we'll pull this stack apart so we can get out our busted contact. There's our crap contact right there. Throw him off to the side. And then start putting our stack back together. What's nice about hoodies, you got, got pockets to hide shit. Put stuff in. Okay. Now this is just a regular uh, rubber for ball hitting it and turning and probably a... Oop, 10 or 20 point or 10 or 10 or 100 so we need to adjust this switch and we can put him right back down in there and we can adjust that switch a little better once we get up top and place rubbers and everything then we can just go ahead and adjust that switch wherever we want it biggest thing is to get it to where it'll work because you, you can't really adjust them while they're up top here out because you don't know how much the rubber is pushing on it so you're better off to just put it back together and when you do the playing field you can you can adjust it then. All right. Need just a little bit of rope. I think I might be able to unsolder that. I just found my favorite hammer too. All right. Yeah. Tip's a little bit dirty. Kind of strange how Bally did a lot of these instead of putting them through the eyelet when they would come to a spot like this they would just fold it over and fold it right over the come on there we go See, they just fold it over. See, they would just come to like this contact here and just fold it, just wrap it around, pinch it together, and then solder it down so there's no real end to the wire. Yep, let me let me goop that up. we have to do is just open it up a little bit slide it down over wait for it to heat up enough there she 
those. And voila! Wunderbar! We have another leaf switch. A new leaf switch put in. It's gluten. Like they always say, it's gluten tight. So now let's move up and see if we can't fix that uh, the hole, the drain hole. Now we can't have our balls falling in a broken hole. Okay, first thing we need to do is get this junk out of the way. I mean, somebody had the right idea, but it's just not going to work. Somebody probably were doing the best they could, what they probably what they had, and the best to their ability. So I don't blame them for trying. You know that that switch would work. But we've got better plans. Let me. Let me get you up here a little bit. Oh, pick up your head. There we go. Now, let's take a look at this. Yep. We don't have to worry about it looking, looking rusty. Nobody will ever see that hole. That's a hidden hole. That one stripped out. We have to find a couple of better screws. Somebody stripped out our screw holes. That's not always good. Ooh, that one that one's still good. But that one. No, nope, I'm gonna have to. Oh well, we'll find a good one. We'll find some screws to tighten our hole up. Now here's what I here's what I come up with. See, I have one of these. This is off of just a regular relay with the the stacks of leaf switches, and I have all the pieces parts here that I kind of put everything together that I like and then what we're gonna do is we got that one on the bottom we'll put a put a spacer on there okay here's our other half we'll put that down on there and then we have the top there and there and what I think I will do on the bottom here is I have a piece of isolation material I'll put that on there now see we got this we can adjust it and what we need to do is we can mount this come on there we go we can mount this off to the side of those stripped out holes we'll put our put this little guy right in the middle like so and then when our ball falls in the hole it'll drop down on that little pin and close our switch and we'll have that all fixed up good as new uh, wires are a little uh, may have to move it over a little bit more 
Yeah, we gotta clean, clean, I'll clean the switches up, but anyway, this is the idea. And then we can drop some screws down through here and screw that bad boy right down to the playing field. And that'll give us our. We can straighten him, bend him a little bit, whatever we need to do. I'll find another couple more screws for this and get that tightened down. And I'll get this all mounted up and soldered down. And I'll show you what it looks like after we're done. I just wanted to show you what my idea was. Okay. There we are, folks. Got her all put put together the way it should be. Now when our ball falls in, it'll hit that push down on that little pin and make contact. Got it all screwed down. I just moved it over this way just a little bit to get away from the, those bad holes. Huh, nothing but a bad hole. Got it all soldered in. Am I great or what? Yeah, I know. Or what? So we got that taken care of. We put in a new leaf switch here. Cleaned up all of our contacts and relays. Resleeved all the coils. Uh, we cleaned up and painted our holes. So now our balls aren't falling in rusty holes. And that's it. This playing bottom of this playing field is done. I mean, put a fork in it. It's done. So now we can take this off of here and now we can start putting things back together and maybe start messing around with the playing field, the other side of the playing field. So if you like the video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel and ring that little bell. It's down there. Ding, 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 ding. And that'll give you notification of more cool pinball videos coming up from me. So until next time, see ya.